It is 1960, and the Second World War has been going on for about a third of a century at this point. Uh, it is, however, it has, however, significantly turned into our favor. That said, um, we are having a uh, we're building the first carrier, and uh, that is the Talon class with a deck capacity of 100 planes and in order to support that we are actually starting to produce the high mark 1 which is a naval bomber using uh, using anti ship missiles so guided missiles and that is uh, that is going to be a com a multi role uh, uh, a multiple multi role fighter bomber jet fighter bomber that is going to be launched from the deck of the first Talon class carrier once it's complete, which is going to be mid next year. But that said, we at this point have a sizable amount of ships in the Imperial Battle Fleet, led by the pride of the fleet, the Paldiski. We've got four battle cruisers, uh, one, two, three, four, five, uh, five light cruisers and 14 destroyers. And I think we can start going hunting because the upper Baltic and the lower Baltic are, st are suddenly starting to not show any enemy naval activity anymore. So that means that either the crews are completely, um, well, combat ineffective or that the, uh, the ships themselves uh, have become degraded to the point that they're no longer operational in terms of naval superiority and uh, we can probably start hunting them so that's what we're going to do i don't have to wait for the carrier for that but uh, we do have uh, we do have some submarines and i do need to remove the restriction from here otherwise the submarines can't uh, can't reinforce but um, we do have some submarines ready i am actually thinking of uh, bringing all the uh, assault submarine groups in for this operation to uh, to uh, to assist with uh, just sinking the fleet so we'll probably do that uh, and uh, uh, we'll we'll just we'll disband these for now so we'll just bring all the submarines in and combine them with the battle fleet and the battlefield is going to be coming yes she is under the command of um, of uh, Varga so once everything has joined here, we will start assault in, uh, operations in the Baltics. We don't even need to, to waste our, our, our air support on that because, uh, well, uh, we can probably do that, on, do that on sea. Well, in other news, uh, is not an awful lot of uh, enemy aviation underway anymore. So I will, uh, I will reorganize our fighters to just wear down whatever remaining air force is in the area here which is relatively few at this stage and I think the majority of it is probably uh, not even from the from the from the Russians so uh, we've, they've got 400 planes up in the Arkhangelsk region but uh, that's something we should have an airport there that is yes we have a large airport here so um, while we have mostly used that for transport planes we can also uh, that that is to support so to support the offensive in the east, we can also get some planes over here. Now on land, uh, I did say that I would like to push up to the, uh, I would push up to the river line here near uh, Dnepropetrovsk. So we'll probably do that, but we are already holding everything uh, northwards here as well. So uh, I think we can, um, we can slowly start uh, northern operations. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll just destroy the allied troops here but I want to avoid that I'm going to have to take over all the territory. So I'm actually happy to just leave them there. And uh, I would like to uh, to retake my core territory in the north. So that's the strategic objective for now. The Americans are not in a good shape. Uh, they are actually just, I think at this point, just garrisoning the British. But uh, I have uh, two operatives. Uh, I have two operatives uh, working in the US. Actually, one at the moment. The other one is being... Um, uh, the other one has been captured, so I do need to uh, do need to start a rescue operation here, and we will send somebody. Let's send uh, good old Vladimir here, and please complete that. But uh, we are working on reducing the uh, the Americans. 
uh, we're reducing uh, the uh, not the stability is already low, but we uh, we are increasing the uh, the popularity of the Silver Legion of America, and we want to get to the point that we can start uh, working with the American underground, because the, the, the happiness with the American government is on an all-time low after they have lost, after they have incurred such heavy losses. Ooh, that is a big development. Spain has just declared war on the British. That means we can probably uh, we can probably invite Spain to the faction. Let's see. Because I've tried that before, but they're still non-aligned. Uh, they're not, but they have a very strong fascist underground. So, um, yes, they will accept. Welcome Spain to the, uh, to the Axis. Uh, that means I'm going to get another operative, hopefully. And uh, I just have to wait until my, I'm not sure where all my submarines went. Uh, oh, there they are. Okay, submarines are coming in. We're almost ready to launch the... Uh, to launch... Yep, uh, Spain has joined the war. Oh, that is going to hurt. <laughs> because uh, Gibraltar is going to fall and the Spanish have a foothold in Northern Africa with Spanish Africa. So they can... Uh, they can uh, retake and... Uh, uh, the uh, Rio de Oro, they, they're holding that as well. So they can retake the North African coast here if necessary. Well, that is great news. So once the once the fleet is ready, we will start uh, naval operations. The fleet is assembled at Memel and uh, we're ready to pr probably start with the Upper Baltic. So I'm going to move them over to uh, Stockholm. And then we will begin uh, patrolling the Upper Baltic. I have started trading for a bit more oil, so uh, this uh, the fuel situation should be relatively stable even with the fleet on the move. Uh, we have moved over to Stockholm, and uh, we will give them uh, we we will give them the patrol order on the Upper Baltic, and then we'll see how. Four battle cruisers, five light cruisers, 14 destroyers and 71 submarines are going to fare against the combined Allied fleet that has been trapped in the Baltics. And we are patrolling and we have the first naval combat. What are we up against? Uh, we are fighting a couple of light cruisers, destroyers and one Japanese uh, aircraft carrier, the Unryu. But uh, our ships have very good AA, so I don't think uh, that is a massive problem. <laughs> yep, uh, that is that was a quick resolution of that particular of that particular battle. One of the submarines, which uh, our destroyers are still hunting, but um, uh, the the Unrio has been sunk by the uh, by the battle cruisers. The light cruisers uh, are, have been sunk by, and the destroyers have been sunk by the secondaries and the light guns. The, uh, the submarines didn't even get uh, didn't even get to join. So uh, that's a good start. Uh, there's still there might be still some battle groups uh, hanging around the upper Baltic. So we'll keep going. I'm suspecting that the main fleet is uh, in is stuck in the lower Baltics, uh, but uh, we will see how that's going. And uh, there we go. First engagement. One submarine escaped, the USS Pollock. But uh, significant losses here. And uh, a very, very light damage to one destroyer. But other than that, not much. And we're already hunting the next group. A couple more light cruisers. Yeah, that's not going to be any problem whatsoever. And they're gone. <laughs> um, and this group's gone as well. And I think think that may actually have been that may have been it i don't know if there's anything else nope there was okay we found the submarine as well so uh, that was the upper baltic uh, that went uh, uh, that happened uh, more quickly than i could even anticipate so uh, let's move over into uh, into the naval base at scania and include the uh, lower baltic from uh, for, uh, in in our operations, Let's head over into Scania, and then we're going to patrol uh, lower Baltic area and no longer the upper Baltic area, if I can manage that. That is patrol, not this area. There we go. That's what I'm trying to do. Uh, fleets on the way into the area, and we'll see uh, how big of an enemy navy we are encountering here. Um, Yep, that is the Allied fleet. Uh, we have encountered... Hang on, I, I need to... Uh, 
29 capital ships and 730 escorts. Under normal circumstances, this would have been relatively suicidal. But uh, I'm reasonably certain that uh, we can take them on. But uh, we're engaging at medium risk at this point, just to make sure that, uh, that this is actually going to work out. But we'll see how that goes. Uh, some of our submarines are disengaging. We have sunk one of the destroyers. And it looks like... Uh, uh, some of the enemy forces are disengaging as well. The, the big ones here are uh, three three carriers, uh, five he heavy, five nine. It's a, there's a lot of heavy cruisers, uh, and we have three British battleships trapped here as well. So we've got the Dreadnought, the Iron Duke, and the Emperor of India, as well as two Japanese, three Japanese battleships, and a, battle, a Japanese battle cruiser. Uh, so this might be going on for a while. Um, I'd, uh, it looks like our fleet is dis disengaging. We'll see how much damage we're actually taking. I think um, uh, while our ships are disengaging, uh, their their naval positioning is terrible because there's just so many of them. So we are actually sliding through the, uh, cutting through the enemy forces here and just sinking ships with uh, exhausted, starved crews and low ammunition and poor maintenance, left, right, and center. Uh, this might take a little bit of time, so we'll let that on. We'll let that go, and then we will see when that naval battle has completed. And we captured another operative. Did I launch the operation to? Oh, I'm going to get another one in 17 days. Um, uh, did I launch the operation? Yes, uh, I am rescuing our captured operative. Uh, so in the meantime, uh, we have shot down. We're shooting down things over Ukraine. And uh, we may as well uh, uh, complete uh, complete up to the lines here, but uh, uh, I don't know for how much longer this battle is going on. We're definitely sinking a lot of these enemy ships, and they are trying to disengage, which is going to be hard for them. But uh, so are ours because we've set the we've set the priority to uh, we've we've set the retreat priority to medium. So I might. Um, uh, I'll actually wait for this to complete, and I might change the uh, priority to high, so they don't uh, they don't disengage that easily. Okay, the battle is almost over. Uh, most of the uh, most of the fleet has disengaged at this point. It's just the submarines that need to get out of there, um, and most of the enemy fleet is disengaging as well. There is, uh, yeah, as you can see, a bit of a naval battle going on. So I will try to actually um, uh, send them to. Uh, send them to repairs and then uh, oh, we'll, yeah okay we're done uh, we'll send the fleet in for repairs I don't know if any of our ships got severely damaged but let's take a look here uh, yes we've got some light uh, some light damage from uh, on some of our ships but I think nothing really uh, nothing major uh, just a couple of scrapes on the paintwork really we have sunk however um, a Lots of destroyers. Uh, we have sunk uh, the Emperor of India, uh, a couple of light cruisers. We've sunk the a Swedish coastal defense ship, and uh, a couple of submarines. So that was a that was a successful operation, and I think we can operate at uh, we can operate at uh, a higher risk afterwards. So for now, we'll. Um, We'll get them to uh, to head home for repairs because uh, one of our uh, one of our uh, light cruisers is on fire and one of our destroyers has a broken propeller, so that's some stuff that I would like repaired before we uh, before we finish up. And we've got another destroyer here that can already join the task force. So once everyone is repaired, I'll bring them back and then we'll uh, we'll take them on again. And we are about to encircle and destroy the last remaining uh, enemy troops here near Odessa. And that's that. Uh, that would be, yep, uh, that would be a field army. That's about to be gone here. And that's done. And uh, now that's, I think, the end of, uh, of enemy operations in the area. And we can uh, we can probably start focusing a little bit more on the north. The army should be almost uh, the uh, sorry the na the navy should be almost repaired. And that was three hundred thousand uh, Allied troops. Uh, the navy should be almost repaired. The Spanish have uh, started 
or the Spanish have started uh, taking on uh, quite significant Allied forces in uh, near Casablanca and uh, have already liberated large parts of Spanish Morocco. So given the relative weakness of the, especially the United States at this point, uh, that should be a good, uh, that should be good progress. How is our repair status? I think, yep, the Navy is all repaired. So let us get them back i've set them to high risk engagement let's just get them back to patrolling the area in the lower baltic and take on that massive allied fleet once more so uh, what are the uh, no i don't need i don't need the expeditionary forces italy you use these forces please okay um we are in naval in a naval battle again <laughs> and uh, this is actually straining the game quite a little but at this point, I'm curious to see if my ships are going to stay on target a little bit longer. The debuffs from the uh, from the overcrowding uh, is uh, are, uh, from the overcrowding are quite severe, so a lot less attack, a lot less screening, and their submarines should be a lot more visible. Uh, it looks like uh, even on high risk engagement, they're still actually disengaging. So I might have to. I might have to change the rules to always engage, because under normal circumstances you wouldn't be wanting take you would you wouldn't be necessarily wanting to take on such a massive force. But I think these are all not in the greatest shape to begin with. Yeah, even the tooltips don't work at this point. But uh, we should even as uh, uh, their screening efficiency is 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 at hundred percent, so we should not be able to do much about the capital ships just yet, except for the battle cruisers. But, um, uh, I, I might have to change that to always engage. Uh, so um, we are not fuel efficient. Yes, I know we're not fuel efficient for patrol. <laughs> uh, this fleet is meant to patrol, but that's okay. We're just meant here to destroy, not to patrol. All right, uh, we'll let them do this, and then um, uh, I will uh, I will send them back to repairs again, and uh, we'll keep well, we keep we'll keep at it until we have destroyed the majority of the forces there. Uh, here everything looks uh, looks reasonably good. First army is making great progress, and honestly, I'm almost thinking that we can just extend um, we can just extend Germany into into the Russian Federation and just capitulate them. Because honestly, the Russian the Russian Federation has eight million available manpower. The longer we let them, the longer we leave them there, the more divisions they're going to be building, and the harder it is to uh, to do something about it. There's also a fair amount of American troops here still that I would like to destroy. Uh, so I'm not sure where these where they found these twenty divisions here, Americans. But uh, yeah, I think we can we can literally just uh, keep going, and uh, and effectively just push towards Moscow in the north. So I might I might just break break through the areas here, destroy some more Allied troops that are sitting uh, that are sitting there in the trenches. It's not an awful lot anymore. They've mostly redistributed them along the front lines, and we have kept destroying them. So uh, uh, yeah, fair amount of American divisions here. We'll we'll break through. Where are we going to break through? Uh, we'll break through towards Smolensk. Uh, take the and then we'll we'll just we'll just uh, take Moscow and encircle everything to the north. We should have. Is there another? Yeah, there's another supply hub here. So if we take uh, these two supply hubs and then hit Moscow, and then we can cut through to the north, take the supply here, uh, and then from there we can just. Uh, and I, I think I am at this point just going to divert a couple of uh, mechanized infantry divisions uh, that have nothing, that don't really have anything better to do uh, towards the line here, and then we'll just uh, drive through the area and take everything. Okay, I think actually uh, that is a relatively reasonable mode of engagement. We have sunk a fair amount of destroyers. We've sunk the Hiei, as well as a bunch of heavy cruisers, some of the submarines. And we've lost uh, three submarines for um, two enemy destroyers. So I think in uh, and the fleet again is a little bit scratched, but not massively so. Some of the submarines are quite, uh, quite heavily damaged, actually. But... Uh, Everybody's heading back to, for repairs. The uh, the Abruka is uh, has has received a magazine hit, and definitely needs some repairs. So uh, we'll get them back for repairs for now, and then we will send them back into action again. In the meantime, I am relocating. Uh, I am relocating the uh, some of the first army's motorized divisions, and we that means we are going to have to. 
make sure that only we have supply. <laughs> I think that supply hub is not effective for, yeah, that supply hub here is not going to be effective. So it's really down to the, uh, to the Archangel's naval base. Uh, the idea is to break through towards the capital, take that supply hub, um, and uh, just make our way through in the, uh, before the Allies can send reinforcements, because at this point I think we have pretty much depleted their operational capacities and hopefully the uh, I do have I do have uh, 10 transport wings up here can I can I send up can I set up any more um, no not really I, I've got a lot of uh, fight I've got more fighters at this point than I need but I might just actually start sending some to Germany so they can uh, they can make use uh, they can make use of the fighters so uh, I've got uh, 700, uh, 700 Mark III Typhoons at this point, so I might as well just, uh, uh, just send 700 to Germany so they can start uh, they can start joining the fun as well with uh, some jet planes. There you go, Germany. And while the fleet is repairing, uh, we are moving the we're moving the motorized divisions north and uh, to deal with that. And I might just do a little bit of an operation around, where was that, Smolensk? Yeah, in the meantime with the uh, first. And Jackson actually, okay, he can, he has a, um, he should have an available ability. Yes, he's got a, an available trait. So I can take a Panzer Expert for Armored Division Defense. Uh, not really feeling that combined arms for although that that would increase the breakthrough but the breakthrough is is so high it doesn't matter anyway um, I think I'm gonna take the uh, um, I'm gonna take the combined arms doesn't I don't think it makes it matters it's just that it gives more of a, of a modifier and uh, it gives the increased chance of the tactics and that should work so combined arms expert it is there we go, and uh, yeah. Th so uh, one thing that you might not be uh, might not be aware of is that these medals are stacking. So these medals actually give armor. So if we're looking at the Order of the Brave, that gives plus ten percent armor. So this division has uh, one hundred forty nine armor at this point. So if I am going to award them the uh, the order of the brave again. I don't have enough, but I think it, it, it doesn't double it, but it, it still increases it slightly. So some of these divisions that have uh, that have a lot of medals at this point are um, uh, relatively crazy powerful. So there's that. While the fleet is repairing, uh, we have brought a thousand fighter uh, jet fighters and a thousand jet uh, tactical bombers to support to give air support for the. A three-point breakthrough of the remaining allied lines here. Uh, we will be going after the supply hubs. Uh, one here, uh, one in Smolensk and one in Rezev. Uh, we have three uh, three small army groups. I've removed in air territories that I control. Um, I have actually, and I do need to clear up this front line here actually. Now that I see it, I haven't even paid attention, that's fine. I uh, don't really need this infantry for anything just now. Um, well, I will f I'll find something to do for them, but uh, th these these infantry divisions are purely defensive. They are no good at at assault operations at this point. But uh, we can um, uh, we we can have them uh, come along. So uh, we'll we'll break through on these three points. Let's get uh, let's get air operations underway. Uh, there's not an awful lot. Yeah, there's not an awful lot left over uh, in terms of uh, enemy air, enemy air power. Uh, there are a couple Indian fighters up in the air, but not an awful lot. The bigger problem is the amount of fuel that it needs for us to actually make this happen. So uh, let's begin with a tank breakthrough to encircle these American uh, these American divisions in the north here, and we can use the infantry to pin them. Uh, we will take Smolensk, uh, break through, and wipe out these uh, these American troops in the north. The Germans can help. Uh, <coughs> the Germans can help as well. Uh, to okay, we actually haven't taken Smolensk. That's because I want the I want the uh, to encircle the Americans first, if possible. And uh, please keep them pinned. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we've got the tanks on the way. These divisions are not going to get out of there. 
And then they can uh, proceed towards their uh, stated objective in Smolensk. And then uh, we will simultaneously launch an operation in the north where I have the uh, heavy tank river, the marines operational. We need to push towards Rezef. Where's the, uh, where's the railway going? This way. Okay, so that's where we're going. Along the railways towards the supply line. And uh, the, the mechanized infantry is going to follow up. And we have a third line where we need to push, and that is... Where's the railway? Here, that's the direction. So uh, let's uh, move out from this little salient and just, uh, just ensure that we are not, uh, we're not getting cut off. But we can, uh, we, can then, uh, we can then cut off and destroy a fair amount of these uh, Soviet divisions here. In fact, I will probably just get one tank division to do that while uh, the rest is pushing back against the Soviets. Uh, the Soviets, the, the Russian Federation. And there we go. So let's, uh, let's, keep, uh, let's keep the assault rolling here. Let's making sure that, uh, that, we are, that we are taking all the necessary positions. We've got some tanks in the north that we can use. Uh, how's things going here? Have we, have we taken, yes, we've taken Smolensk, so now we need to wait for that to be, uh, we'll consolidate that. Okay, we'll let this, uh, there we go. Two tank divisions is enough. And actually three tank divisions to destroy that. Uh, we do need to wait for the, uh, we do need to wait for the, uh, the supply to catch up. But uh, wherever we have some opportunities, and we have taken Rejef, but we do need to ensure that we are not going to get cut off anywhere here. So let's use the uh, let's use the mechanized infantry here as well. One of the tanks is returning. We leave one behind, but uh, we'll just already start working on the encirclement in the south, uh, taking the airport here. Uh, okay, the Germans have caught up actually. In that case, uh, we can just keep uh, we can just keep pushing them, I believe. Smolensk, Smolensk. Uh, can we? Yes, we control Smolensk, so we have to make sure that the uh, the Germans don't get the supply, because we do need uh, we do need the supply on our tanks. And then we can uh, just kind of push them ahead of ourselves here. So let's uh, clear that up from the south, surround these and destroy. Are we clear in the air? Uh, yes, we are clear in the air over Belarus. Uh, we're gonna have to fight over Novgorod next, I believe. We're almost in the Novgorod uh, area. So the tanks are relatively quick, so they can they can make short work of these of these positions. Whereas the heavy tanks take a while to move anywhere. Um, but. Uh, I think I'll just leave one here to defend the to actually defend the uh, the position there. Okay, that's done. Encirclement, and now we can get everybody to just destroy that. And in the south, where are my tanks? Where am I? Where's my armor? Uh, very very few uh, remaining Russian positions here. Okay, I'll need to reorganize this a little bit, so it's gotten a bit chaotic. We might be able to do a push into the north, actually, and uh, and uh, from Rezef and cut things out from there. So I'll have to reorganize the front lines once everything is uh, once everything is uh, is dealt with here. How's my navy doing? Can we go for a third operation, or are we still repairing? I believe we are complete by the looks of it. Yes, we are complete. So uh, I think high risk was a good one. So we'll, we're going out on patrol and we'll take them on again. And once more into the breach, now that everything is repaired. Uh, some of our ships are racking up quite um, quite the score here, honestly. How many are we still engaging? Yeah, about almost 600. So there's still a fair amount to sink. Um, 19 ships. Uh, 13. We'll see who's got the highest right here. I, I think the, uh, I think it's the Hyuma with uh, 19 ships sunk. That has uh, has the highest score at this point. So, 
once again, uh, we are uh, we're, chip we're chipping away at the uh, at the rest of the defensive forces here. And uh, as soon as we have these screens dealt with, then we should be able to take on the rest as well. And yes, I will have to I will have to clear out my front lines here because it's gotten a little chaotic. But we've got we've gone we've made good progress towards Moscow. We'll probably concentrate on this region here, cut off everything, uh, destroy that. And then uh, we might even have the supply. Do we? No, there's no supply in the north really here. But uh, we might just take Moscow and then cut them off along the, the supply lines near Moscow. Yeah, that's the better pro uh, approach. And once again, a good chunk of enemy ships sunk. One of the old Swedish coastal defense ships has gone down. And their screen they still have about 300 destroyers left. That is kind of the largest amount of ships that is... Um, and their screening force and these are the things that are actually causing the most damage as well now, they don't cause a lot of damage but they are a bit of a threat to the submarines so we'll whittle that down and uh, we've got the do we have the supply lines here now uh, yes we just have to make sure that we are getting the supply not everybody else I think I can give Germany supply here again and that should be okay but in the north here I have to ensure where's the supply here even coming from. Uh, we don't really have an awful lot of supply here. Okay, we'll, we'll make do, but uh, we will have to launch this operation quickly before my tanks are, my tank crews are getting hungry. So let's uh, let's encircle that and destroy the uh, destroy this last uh, salient here. A while. Yeah, while we're waiting for the Navy to repair, and I think, uh, yep, I've got another ship that I can send in. So in the meantime, that's that. Uh, do I have, yes, close air support into the air, please. Jackson has been wounded, that is unfortunate, but uh, it also doesn't matter because we have already captured our, uh, we have already achieved our objective. So let's make sure that we uh, destroy, that we use all the available forces to to destroy, actually, uh, let's use whatever we have in the area uh, to to destroy the uh, the remaining forces on the ground here. The tanks are actually overrunning them at this point. I don't think the the Russians are going to be able to hold the front lines much longer. And the next big push uh, is going to come from here towards Moscow. So we'll set that up next once we've once we've cleared out the last pockets of resistance here. And now, Hungary, you can keep your divisions. We don't want to, uh, we don't want your expeditionary forces. Yeah, I think uh, we'll take Moscow. We'll cut north, and I do, however, have these divisions already in place here. So, uh, Arkhangelsk region, we should be okay. I've got uh, eleven fighter wings, just in case, and we can send the transport planes on an air supply mission. There we go, and that sh should so should improve the supply situation a little bit. Anyway, we will now declare war on the Komi Republic, and uh, uh, we can do that ourselves. So that's that. Uh, we'll send these three divisions. Where's their capital? There. We'll send these three divisions there. And here uh, we will just uh, take as much territory as we can before the Allies are inevitably inevi inevitably trying to spoil the fun for me. So let's just take the territory and uh, make, make sure that we secure what is rightfully ours. So off we go. They have joined the Allies, of course, uh, which isn't going to help them. Oh, yeah, everybody wants to join the war. Uh, uh, that's fine, to be honest. Uh, you don't have to, because I am just trying to. I am just trying to make sure that we are taking. Uh, we are taking all their possessions here, and uh, clearing the lines. Now I don't know how much supply we are actually getting from the transport planes. So let's take a look. Um, I think we are outside of range of the transports, so we definitely need to start, once we've taken the capital, which I think we are about to, 
uh, we need to start uh, building the railway up here. So from here to there, that needs to already happen. So get started with that. And we're almost across the river lines uh, to take the capital. I don't know at, at which point the allies are going to be able to actually even join here. I don't think they are going to be able to do an awful lot, to be honest. Okay, uh, keep going. Just, uh, keep uh, keep taking ter keep taking territory until we until they capitulate. And I think uh, we have no opposition in the Arkhangelsk region, so we don't actually need any fighters up in the air. And we're not currently running any operations in Novgorod either, so we can save a bit of fuel again. While uh, everybody is getting the, themselves sorted, but I do want to pay attention now at this point to the ongoings in the Komi Republic, which I think we have almost under control. I think once we take the once we take the capital, then it's going to be over. And uh, yeah, there are some Russian forces here, but I think that's about it. So I think the the, the Allied lines at this point are completely collapsed, and uh, we can finish off Russia relatively easily as well. Uh, what I actually have to do is uh, build a supply hub. So let us construct a strategic supply hub. Well, around here, and we'll expand the railway up to there. Level 5 railways. All the way, please. Okay. And my supply hub needs to happen, so we'll get that, uh, we'll get that, uh, we'll get that going. And then I think we can, uh, we can make uh, further operations happen, because yeah, right now, we are being we are facing allied counterattacks and there is absolutely no supply in the area so uh, that is a bit of a problem how did our navy fare our navy is uh, still engaged i believe we have already sunk uh, wow that was a big one i think there's not much left actually uh, we've sunk uh, the yamato and the dreadnought together who would have thought that uh, yamato and hms dreadnought would have been sunk uh, would have been sunk by who did who did the sinking? I am very curious. Um, wh who would have th who would have thought that Yamato and HMS Dreadnought would have been sunk in August 1960 by a uh, by a by an effectively an Estonian battle cruiser? <laughs> that that my friends here, I'm gonna have to take a screenshot of. That is certainly special. I think on that bombshell, and uh, I think we are now in the uh, in the in the final engagement. Yeah, I think that's it. That's the final engagement. I'm going to end the episode here. And uh, yep, that's I think just a couple of submarines left. Uh, that these were the last uh, carriers, the Taiho, the Unryu, and the other Taiho. <laughs> and that is the end of Allied uh, Allied fighting power in the Lower Baltic Sea. And that's it for me today. Thanks, everybody, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.